Well, the World Health Organization has been involved in a number of international uh, strategies for improving health around the world. And a little over two years ago, they decided to focus on safety around surgical procedures. And they brought together uh, experts to develop checklists to be done before surgical procedures, similar to the checklists that are done in airlines uh, before a plane pushes back from the gate or takes off. Well, checklists are not a new concept, and they have been used in the aviation industry for 20 years. They're relatively new to the healthcare industry. Hospitals are using checklists, but there is not one standardized form of a checklist being used. A surgical procedure, like an airline flight, depends on many different disciplines, many professionals, many technical aspects, the availability of necessary equipment at the right time when it's needed. The procedures happening are complicated. There's many people in the room, many people responsible for different aspects of the procedure. There are so many opportunities for something to go wrong. We believe that a checklist before you actually begin the operation, before you are in a position that you can't back out of, is very important. Once the list had been completed, they realized that to make sure it accomplished what they wanted, that it should be trialed in a number of pilot hospitals around the world. So I volunteered our medical center to be one of the worldwide pilot centers. We were one of eight centers around the world that piloted this. He introduced it to the general surgery team with his colleagues, and we're split into services. So since we're on the general surgery service, it was our part of our responsibility to help um, bring in the pilot. We feel strongly that the attending surgeon should conduct the checklist, which is really a meeting of the minds and a double checking of all the different professional groups in the room. It doesn't take more than a couple minutes and it's a just it's increased the time that we have to ask questions, mm -hmm. to check and double check each other. When you're talking about an operation that's going to take an hour or longer, two to four minutes for patient safety seems like a really minimal investment. It's saying we want to do the best for our patients and we've created a system, a safer system, to provide the best possible care for our patients. Once the patient has been put asleep and everyone is ready to begin the procedure, we call a timeout. And the timeout is something that hospitals have been doing actually for many years. That's the time when the patient's identity and the consent form and the intended procedure are reviewed one more time. Now with the checklist, we extend that and we go through a pre-op briefing where the anesthesia team, the nursing team, and the surgical team get to explain what's going to happen from their perspective or if there's something different about this case from what is normally done. Is everybody ready? I think so. Okay, let's do the timeout and bring in the checklist. This is Juliet Marshall, U8312467, birth date 23 of September 1982. Correct. Good. I'm Patch, I'm the surgeon. I'm Elizabeth, the resident. I'm Deb, the scrub nurse. I'm Jody, the circulating nurse. I'm Karen, the anesthesiologist. All right, let's have the anesthesia team review. A patient did very well on induction of anesthesia. She does have steroid dependent asthma. All right, any allergies? Uh, she's allergic to penicillin. Good. Uh, nursing team review? Your sterility indicators were checked and confirmed. We were wondering if you would like the atraumatic valve clamps? Yes, we will want those. Okay. All right, uh, this is gonna be an exploratory laparotomy for lysis of adhesions for bowel obstruction. This patient has had a prior exploration for motor vehicle accident followed by hernia repair with extensive mesh, so we may have uh, a slow and tedious dissection. I'm not sure how long, but several hours at least. Single operative field, usual instruments, plus the atraumatic uh, clamps, as we mentioned. I do not anticipate a lot of blood loss. The surgeon reviews what we call the process controls, and this is something that this medical center and scope have basically added to what was on the WHO checklist. Uh, we don't need imaging. Uh, is the bear hugger going? Yes, it is. Okay. 
uh, glucose does not need to be checked now. She's not diabetic, but would you please check it again in an hour in case it's going up? Will do. Uh, not on beta blockers, doesn't need them. Did she get her pre-op heparin? Yes, she has, 5,000 units. And uh, are the SCDs going? Yes, they are. Antibiotic prophylaxis, when was it given? Yeah, it was given 30 minutes ago. Good. Uh, no specific checklist needed. And uh, to prevent sharps injuries, we'll announce any sharp passages and uh, go blunt end first. Agreed? Agreed. All right, let us begin. Knife? Mm -hmm. The debriefing begins basically when the procedure is almost over. And it needs to involve the surgeon at the time that he or she begins to close the surgical wound. Okay. We're ready for closure. We've checked and confirmed everything out of the abdomen. Can we have the uh, malleable and retractor and closure sutures, please? Before the wound is closed, the nursing team will count all the instruments, sponges, and needles, and they will inform the surgeon at the end of the procedure if the count was correct, which is what, of course, we always hope for. After the wound is closed, the nurse, the anesthesiologist, the surgeon review the conduct of the operation. Okay, um, that's closed. Let's bring in the checklist, Jody, and uh, look at the debriefing. Okay. Counts? Your instrument, sponge, and sharp counts were correct. Good. Uh, this was an exploratory laparotomy, lysis of adhesions, small bowel resection. Uh, specimen label? In one specimen was labeled small bowel. Patient's name is Juliet Marshall. Good. No special instructions for the pathologist. Equipment issues to be addressed? Uh, no, there were not. Anything we should have done differently or better? No. Nope. Very smooth. Good. All right. No beta blockers needed post-op. Uh, key concerns for recovery and management? I'm planning to extubate her awake due to her bowel obstruction, and I will watch her carefully in recovery room because of her asthma. Sounds good. She may need some extra IV fluids in recovery due to her bowel obstruction. Everything else should be okay. Uh, let's have the dressing, please. Mm -hmm. SCOPE is a unique Washington State program that's been created by surgeons that is improving the quality and safety of surgical care across the state. What SCOPE does is monitor process of care measurements around the time of an operation and it monitors outcomes from operation in terms of complications. The scope data is used to see where the problems are lying. Those get imposed onto the checklist. The checklist, is, in essence, is created from the scope data and allows doctors and nurses to stop the problem at the moment of action before it can happen. I'm happy to say that our missed number of process measures was very low at our medical center, but even that low rate was cut in half by the introduction of the checklist. It's become second nature to us. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting when you uh, go work on another service which has not implemented this yet, it's as if this part is missing. The checklist was begun in one of the surgical services at this medical center, the general surgery service with 13 surgeons. After the success of that, uh, the University of Washington Medical Center has determined to roll this out to every specialty, every operating room, every surgeon, every procedure. SCOPE is hoping to place a SCOPE surgical checklist in every operating room across Washington State by the end of 2009. And as people become uh, accustomed to the checklist, it becomes much more efficient. And if you find something that wasn't ready or that needs to be done differently, it's impossible to measure the value of that in, in time, in minutes, or even hours. And you have to have involvement from everybody. You can't mm -hmm. just have one faction doing their own thing. Everybody has to stop and pay attention because, after all, we are focused on the patient. Mm -hmm. Absolutely worth it.